What's up? <clears throat> What's up, YouTube? This is Two Raw Four TV. All right. So look, um, I know. I think this is like the third time I've done a video about them debating one another, but they got to go ahead and just debate, man. Okay. Um, all this posturing and these excuses is is getting sickening. Okay, when I see a two coward ass people who really don't want to debate one another, okay, <clears throat> they don't want to debate one another for whatever reason. And I'm going to speculate as to what it is, what I think it really is. So, former President Donald Trump had previously agreed to debate Joe Biden on September the 10th. And um, now that Joe Biden has dropped out of the race and has been replaced by Kamala, now all of a sudden he doesn't want to debate on ABC. Okay? He doesn't want to debate on ABC. Now he wants to debate September the 4th on Fox News. Well, with Fox News... Uh, 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 moderators essentially on fox news so what that tells me is that donald trump is not as confident as he thinks he is or, or, or he appears to be the, some of the supporters not as confident because it seems like he always wants to have some advantage to him fairness is when he has a distinct advantage now before you was going up against and i think we all would agree with this you went up against a man clearly past his prime a man clearly on the decline in his cognitive abilities. Okay? Because he wouldn't have really debated Joe Biden from 10 or 15 years ago. He would have, Joe Biden would have mopped the floor with him then. But he wants to debate in a situation where he has a tactical advantage or a distinct, some type of advantage. Now that he's going up against somebody who is actually a living, breathing co uh, a person, not a, a semi-corpse, now he doesn't, you know, he's hedging. And um, that that that's that's tacky. Okay, I'm sorry. I know I have Trump supporters on here. I have a Kamala Harris supporters. I keep it, I try to keep it fair. You know what I'm saying? I have my opinions on certain things, but I don't have a dog in this race. So to to Trump, just just go through it, man. Just go through with it. Now with Kamala. <clears throat> my issue with her is I guess you could argue it's posturing but she doesn't want to accept these debate terms going on Fox News or however it's going to be Fo either Fox News uh, uh, although the, the debate's not just going to be on air on Fox News but basically what I'm saying is it'll be at the Fox News station with the Fox News anchors as moderators or however they do it or as some neutral location with fox news moderators however they got to get this thing done get it done i don't care if some of the moderators are fox news uh affiliated maybe some of them are abc news affiliated whatever the case may be get this damn thing done um so that we can have our debates because this is ridiculous these people are not scared to debate one another with kamala harris I'm assuming her situation is her camp could be saying, well, why? We have the momentum. And maybe they're not as confident with her actually being asked questions about policy because it doesn't favor her because a lot of the things this administration has done or haven't done won't be in their fa her favor. And, you know, as we all know, when she's in a situation where she has to ask, actually answer uh, questions about the, the Biden administration or policy, she struggles. She struggles with that, and they know that. So as long as she's out in the stump with a field arena and just blasting Donald Trump, they're confident with that. They're cool with that. But the minute they put her in a situation where she has to debate someone else on policy, she struggles. Now, this is something that Trump supporters got to remember now. 
Everybody wants to call her an airhead, and you know she got to where she is by sleeping and sucking and all that, right? That might be true, but don't underestimate Kamala Harris. I'm gonna tell you why. Don't forget who it was that almost had the Democratic machine not rig the primary. She almost single-handedly derailed Joe Biden's campaign. Remember, she's the one that was blasting Joe Biden when it came to his former stance <coughs> on busing and his association with uh, prior association with segregationists. Remember, she was doing that before she magically gave him for all of that and ran, ran on the ticket with him. But she's the one that had Joe Biden running fifth in the polls. And remember, she had to drop out because herself, she, was, she wasn't tracking more than 8%. But Joe Biden was fifth. Joe Biden was almost dead in the water. Remember that? Don't forget this woman is a prosecutor. Trump is a liar. We know that. Trump is a habitual... He, the, guy, the guy lies so much. He makes, he makes Richard Nixon look like goddamn the Pope. Okay, the guy lies when he doesn't even have to lie. Yeah. Just this weekend, I hit three holes in one. Three holes. Never been, never been done before. Uh, beautiful, beautiful stroke I had. Just unbelievable. Wait a minute, won't you, uh, won't you at a party Saturday? Uh, no, that, that wasn't me. That, that, that was just someone that looked like me. I was on the golf, golf course. Uh, then after I hit a goal, hole in one, I hit another one. Got a little distracted, almost hole in one. Uh, golf game, uh, magnificent. I mean, he just lies for no reason, man. So at the end of the day, they need to just go ahead and get this done, man. You know, um, I don't care what setting, I don't care what. Whatever, you know what I'm saying? Come to some compromise and get this done. I'm going to tell you another thing about Trump, bro. I'm going to tell you another reason why I say Trump is vulnerable. Remember, Joe Biden's approval ratings are in the 30s. The 30s. The 30s. Okay? The 30s. I think he's like at usually somewhere between 35 and 39% approval. And his his disapprovals are in the fifties. In any other environment, with any other Republican, this could potentially be a four hundred plus electoral vote blowout. The reason that the, the fact that this election is close <clears throat> shows you the weakness of these candidates. It shows you the weakness of Donald Trump and the weakness. Well, actually, I can't even say the weakness of Kamala. The weakness of Donald Trump because he should be way ahead. Now, I get we're in a polarized climate now. Uh, this ain't 1965 when you, you have 15 to 20 swing states. This isn't that environment anymore. Uh, and definitely not the 30s when shit, 40 states were swing states. You know what I mean? Uh, so there was a lot of elasticity in electorate. That's how in 1928, the Republican won with a 40-state landslide with 58% of the vote. And then four years later, the Democrat won, for, uh, Hoover, won in 28, a 40-state landslide with 58% of the vote. But then four years later, Franklin Roosevelt won in a 42-state landslide with 57-plus percent of the vote. The electorate was much more elastic. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 1924, excuse me, 1920, Warren Harding won 60% of the vote. Four years before that, Woodrow Wilson got reelected with 49 plus percent of the vote. Uh, but now you don't see as many wild fluctuations because the electorate is so much more um, fixed to the point we only have a few swing states. Seven, maybe. Uh, so the elect to election will be decided by Arizona, as I said before, Wisconsin, Michigan, uh, Pennsylvania, uh, perhaps North Carolina, Georgia. Virginia might be winnable for Trump, but I'm starting to think that's going to stay in the Democratic column. Uh, there aren't that many swing states. 
But yeah, the, the fact that Trump is not winning by a larger margin shows his weakness and his, his, his uh, limit. Don't get me wrong. Um, he has a formidable machine. He's a former president and he can very well win this election. But I get a sense that he's maxed out his electoral appeal. I don't think he could ever get more than 47% of the vote. I don't think he can get more than 47% of the vote. I'm starting to believe that. When you look at polling, he's never really ahead of uh, more than 47 plus percent. So if you're Kamala Harris, you have to try to get as many undecideds as possible. Uh, to me, Harris is going to win the popular vote just because of how this the state by state races are. New York and California, the Democrats are going to win those by millions of votes. So that's going to give her a national advantage. Uh, Cook County, oftentimes the Democrats win Chicago and Cook County area by a million votes. So she's probably going to win a national popular vote. The question is if she can get to, to 270, she definitely can. Um, because right now you're already seeing Harris and the Democrats trying to pick off disgruntled Republicans. Remember, Trump made some enemies with the Lynn Cheneys and the Bush neocons. You know, that 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 team doesn't like Trump. Uh, remember, there's really been no major Republicans endorsing Trump as far as being on the presidential ticket, they're still living, other than Sarah Palin. I think she's the only one. His own former vice president is not for him, obviously. I, will, I don't blame him. They try to off him if, if those reports are true. Uh, whereas with Harris, every former president has a reportedly endorsed her. That's a Democrat. Uh, the sitting president, Joe Biden, reluctantly, though, former President Obama, former President Clinton, and even 99-year-old former President Jimmy Carter reportedly plans on voting for Kamala. Matter of fact, his grandson said that uh, the former president told him that one of his motivations to live, because we know he's been in hospice for over a year, one of his motivations to live is because he wants to vote for Kamala Harris. He does not like Donald Trump. Remember, Jimmy Carter, eight years ago, was a, a, was an apologist for Trump. So he's turned off a lot of people. And um, what I thought three weeks ago would be a possible electoral landslide for Trump has now turned into a close race. And Trump right now, for whatever reason, is scared to debate this woman. And they're trying to reconfigure their attacks on her. Uh, as I've said before, a lot of the, the, the normal attacks aren't working on her. They don't work for her because they come across as overly misogynistic. When you start attacking a woman based on her sexual, uh, her sexual activities, which I think is fair game, but it's going to turn off women, especially the younger generation. It's going to turn them off because now you're insulting them as women is, is outside just the prism of politics. So, you know, a lot of women who are Republicans, they like, let's be honest, they like Dick too. So when you start calling her a, a 304 and all this, they're going, well, well, wait a minute now. You're offending them too. And, you know, when you got an idiot for a VP nominee going around insulting people who don't have kids, now you're making a new issue. And you're going outside of the realm of politics. And now you're just, you're, you're, you're pissing people off on a level beyond politics. But, you know, Trump supporters not going to hear me on that. Oh, you're, you're, you're a secret Harris supporter. Right, 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 right. You, so you guys really don't listen. You'll be listening after Election Day if they keep continuing with the, the, the strategy they're going and they lose. And by the way, 
the Trump campaign needs to stop this whole pro police thing. Uh, it, it doesn't work in the black community. It, it, it doesn't work. Anyway, that's all I got to say about. It. Tell me what you guys think. Action! Boom! Time, time for some time for some action. Time, time for some time for some action. <laughs>